I have always found particles to be fascinating. Pixie dust, rain, snow, or whatever else. And I'm not alone. A lot of people love particles, not only because they're really cool per se, but because they have other uses, including compound effects. Paint also has many uses. We can use it for compound effects. We can even duplicate parts of the layer by using clone. In this chapter, we're going to go over the basics of particles and paint. Particles are things that are born from a place, are going somewhere. In other words, have a direction, are born at a rate, and then something happens to them. Sometimes this is called wind or gravity or both. And finally, they die or disappear. Let's go ahead and briefly go through the particle playground. Start a new composition. Go ahead and click on the new comp icon at the bottom of the project panel. And you can leave these settings as they are, 720 by 480. And 10 seconds is good. And click OK. Let's zoom out. Let's go ahead and create a new solid, layer, new, solid, or use the shortcut Control or Command Y. The color of this solid does not matter. So let's go ahead and just click OK. Add the Particle Playground effect. Navigate to Effect, Simulation, Particle Playground. As soon as you add it, the solid disappears, and if we do a RAM preview, let's go ahead and press 0 on the numeric keypad, we will see red particles that are being born from the middle of the screen. Go ahead and stop that. If we navigate to the Effect Controls panel, we will see all the settings for the Particle Playground effect. Let's concentrate on Canon. Let's go ahead and expand that. Notice that you can keyframe position, that is the X and Y coordinate of the point where the particles are going to be born from, the barrel radius, how big the area that the particles are going to be born from is, particles per second. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit wider so we can read the property. That is the rate at which the particles are being born, direction, self-explanatory, where they're going, direction random spread. Let's make this even a little bit wider. There you go. If all the particles are going to the same place, then it's just going to look like a line. So this just adds a degree of randomness so that the particles look a little bit more random. Velocity, this is the speed at which they're born. Velocity random spread. It's the same concept as with the direction random spread. If they're all going at the same speed, then it's not going to look too good. And of course, the color. Let's go ahead and change this color to a white. Click OK. And finally, we have the particle radius. This is how big each and every particle is going to be. Let's go ahead and keyframe some of the properties of this particle. Let's go ahead and move the position of the particles to the bottom. Let's change the particles per second to a little bit more. Let's say about 300 or so. And let's change the velocity to a little bit more as well. Towards the bottom of the screen, you will see the gravity property. Let's go ahead and expand that. Let's give it a little bit less gravity. That way the particles will float more. A negative value means that the particles will just go up instead of down. And of course, gravity has a direction which by default is pointing down. You can also change this. Let's navigate to the cannon again and let's give it a little bit less of a direction random spread. There you go. And let's add a wiggle expression to the direction of the particles. Press and hold the Alt key, option on the Mac, and click on the stopwatch for direction. Now let's just go ahead and write our expression. Remember the wiggle expression? Just type in the word wiggle. Open parentheses. And the first value is for how many times per second? Let's write here a 3, comma, and how many degrees? 90 in this case. And close parentheses. Go ahead and click out of there. And let's do a RAM preview. And you can go ahead and stop it. You can place several particle playgrounds together in different layers, and you can make a ton of different gradient masks for yourself. Let's go ahead and add a fast blur to this. Type in the word 
fast, and then the letter B, and there it is. And let's add this to the layer. And let's change the blurriness value to about a 17 or so. And let's go ahead and do a RAM preview. As you can see, this looks a lot like smoke. If you're going to use this as the control layer of a compound effect, make sure that you pre-compose it first. You can also use other layers to take the shape of the particles. You can even use a video layer to do this. As you can see, particles are fun and have a ton of uses in After Effects. You'll be surprised how many times you see them in TV and film projects.